You found the liver. You've centered in on the gallbladder. You've adjusted the depth and gain. And the image is okay, but it's not sharp, not textbook sharp. It does a job for the clinical question, but when you compare it to the crisp examples in your training or textbooks, it just doesn't hold up. Is it down to your machine or is there something else? Often it comes down to two simple settings, your focal zone and your frequency. Both are based on solid physics and together they have a massive impact on image clarity and your confidence in what you're seeing. I'm Dr. Camilla Edwards and I'm here to explain focal zone and frequency. I'm going to use these to explain your focal zone and these to explain frequency. Let's get started. So let's start with the focal zone. When an ultrasound beam travels through tissue, it doesn't stay the same shape. It begins wide, narrows to a tight point, and then spreads out again. That narrowest part, that's your focal zone. And here's why the physics really matters. Even though we're looking at a two-dimensional image on our screen, the ultrasound waves are three-dimensional. What you see is actually an average of what is happening through the thickness of the sound beam at any given depth. So the narrower the beam at the structure you're trying to image, the better your image quality will be. You reduce the amount of averaging needed and your image becomes much more accurate and more detailed. The focal zone is where your lateral resolution is best. That means how well the machine can tell apart two structures that sit next to each other side by side at the same depth. But if the focal zone is too shallow or too deep, you're using a wider part of the beam and you lose that sharpness. We'll have a look at lateral resolution. So this is our ability to distinguish two structures as separate perpendicular to the sound beam. And this is dependent on sound beam diameter. So what does that all mean? Although we are looking at a two dimensional image on our screen, the sound wave beam entering the animal has a thickness to it. It's not completely flat. So therefore, at any given level, the machine is to making an average of what happens at that depth. So if the thickness of the beam is particularly wide, we're potentially getting an average of a lot of things and it's very inaccurate. If it's really narrow, we are getting very good accuracy and resolution. So the focal zone is the part of the sound beam with the narrowest diameter and therefore the best lateral resolution. Below the focal zone is where the beam widens and we have really poor resolution. And above the focal zone, it's, it's not too bad. So one of the questions I often get asked is, why don't we just put loads of mul multiple focal zones, and some machines will allow you to do this, um, across our screen so that we get best resolution everywhere? Well, the trouble is then, this really slows our frame rate. So we notice that delay in our image. So our hand moves, and then a split second later, the image moves, because the computer needs more time to interpret what, what, what it, the information it's getting. Um, and this can be extremely frustrating to work with and can lead to blurring uh, on the screen as well. So the best thing to do is to pick one focal zone and put it in the right position. So here we've got our, our sound beam and we're I'm depicting the thickness of the beam here. So we can see the level of the focal zone, which is also depicted by this arrow on our image, um, is here where it's na narrowest. And below we can see the focal zone uh, or the, um, uh, the sound beam widening. So we want, um, if we've got two lesions, um, for them to be at the level of the focal zone, um, if possible, if they're small lesions, then they will show up um, nice and um, accurate like this. In contrast, if we have um, our focal zone too high above the lesions we're interested in, where the focal zone um, widens, we will get um, poor resolution and uh, this lateral resolution will show lesions that are uh, sort of blurred together. On most machines, the focal zone is marked with a triangle or chevron on the edge of the image. You can move it up and down uh, using the trackball or a button labeled focal zone or focal position. 
Place it at or just below the structure you are interested in. That's where you'll get the most quality diagnostic image. Some machines allow you to set multiple focal zones. It can be useful, but remember more zones means a slower frame rate. So for anything moving like the heart um, or a panting animal, stick to one focal zone. So I'm gonna to try to demonstrate that using a mug and my torch. So when the beam is wide, when I shine my torch onto the mug, everything's being lit up. There's no real um, clarity on the mug itself. When I narrow it down and place the mug in the narrowest part of the beam, we get real clarity on that mug. Now let's move on to frequency. Ultrasound frequency is measured in megahertz, so sound waves per second. And here's the trade-off. Higher frequency equals shorter wavelengths equals better resolution. But higher frequency also means shallower penetration. It gets absorbed quickly in tissue. So what does this mean practically? Let's use glasses to explain. High frequency is like a reading glasses. They give incredible clarity, but only if the object is close. If you try to look across the room with them, everything's a blur. Low frequency is like distance glasses. You can see further, but you lose some of that detail. We're really interested in axial resolution. So this is the ability to differentiate structures along the sound beam. So axial um, resolution uh, is affected by frequency and that's what we'll look at first. So higher frequencies provide better axial resolution, allowing us to distinguish between smaller structures um, along the sound beam. So with higher fre frequency, we'll see those two lesions as two dots, whereas with low frequency, they'll merge into one dot. How that works here. So on our um, screen here, we have our probe emitting a sound beam, a low frequency. Here's our animal with two lesions um, parallel to the sound beam. This is our image that we're creating. So with a low frequency sound wave, we can see the low frequency is penetrating really deep into the abdomen or the animal here. Um, but it's um, it, it's not necessarily hitting both of these very, um, very well. What you really want is to have a wavelength um, to be less than the distance between these two lesions. And so because that's not being achieved with this low frequency sound wave, these, this lesion is showing up as sort of a blurred one blob rather than two nice distinct lesions. If we instead look at a higher frequency where the wavelength is uh, less than the distance between these two lesions, then we see in the image that these two lesions are really, really clear um, and accurately shown here. So in ultrasound, use high frequency for superficial structures, cat abdomens, the bladder wall in small dogs, or even eyes. For low frequency, use deeper structures, the liver in a deep chested dog or the kidneys in a large breed. Most probes let you toggle between frequency presets. You might see res for resolution or high frequency, gen for general or mid-range frequency, pen for penetration or lower frequency. Other machines let you directly choose the megahertz, 5, 7.5, 10, etc. Use the highest frequency that still reaches your target. If you go too high and your structure disappears into shadow or haze, drop it down a notch. Well, let's have a look at how we can find those buttons on your machine. Mm. So let's see how we can um, find those buttons on our machine. So for the focal zone, Look for that triangle or arrow um, or chevron along the side of your image. Move it using the trackball or find a button labeled focal zone or focal position. 
If the machine won't let you move it, adjust your depth so your structure lands where the focal zone already is. If your machine won't let you move it, it's highly likely that it's associated with the depth of your image and it is then even more important for you to get your depth correct. So only imaging what you need to image and just beyond. For frequency, look for a button or setting labeled frequency or freq. It might be on the main screen or buried under image settings or probe options. You'll either see frequency names like res, gen, pen, or exact numbers in the megahertz. Some machines hide this setting more than they should, but it's worth digging around and trying to find it. Once you do, don't just leave it alone. Get into the habit of adjusting it based on the structure and the patient in front of you. It only takes a few seconds and the difference in image quality is often immediate. So to wrap it all up, your focal zone is where your beam is at its sharpest. Place it at or just beneath the structure that you care about. Your frequency is your resolution versus depth control. Use the highest frequency that still allows you to see the target clearly. These aren't advanced settings, they're everyday ones, but they make a huge difference in how clear and detailed and diagnostic your images are. So on your next scan, pick one structure, maybe the spleen, a lymph node or an adrenal gland, and tweak both settings. Compare your first and second image, and you'll be amazed at how much clarity you can gain. And when you do, let me know, drop a message with a comment or with what you scanned and what you changed. I'd love to hear how it helped. If this video did help you, give it a like, hit subscribe and stick around for the next one where we'll dive into all things ultrasound. Thanks for watching. Bye.